Have you ever wondered what would happen if ancient bug gods took over your friend's children and were playing some kind of sick game to absolutely take over you, your mind, and kill everything in their waking path? Yeah. I'm gonna need to call my therapist after this one. So, this is a movie called There's Something Wrong With The Children. Kinda hit the nail on the head with that one, I guess. So, you guys guessed it. Something's wrong with their children. And we're gonna find out what it is. This is a Bloom House movie as well, so this is no small fry, regular Amazon film project that I'm used to, so uh, I actually had higher expectations than this. Um, but you know, of course they disappoint me as usual. This family, one of the families has children, one of the families is just a husband and wife. They all go on this camping trip together, I presume, and they go on a hike with their small children. So I'm assuming that this isn't a really long hike. They run into this extremely mysterious building in the middle of this trail that is massive. Like it would have to be like the size of a mall basically when they're entering it. And I'm like, how is this building gone? you know, undetected this entire time? Why is the campsite not seemingly aware that there's this giant abandoned building in the middle of this campsite? Okay. Okay, climbing into mysterious buildings. Absolutely no idea what could go wrong here, guys. They lose the children after about four seconds. <laughs> oh, look, everyone. A pit to hell. Apparently, it is talking to the children, and uh, no one's gonna say anything about that. Later on, there's this scene where I'm guessing these husbands have to be at least 30, 35 years old, and one of them is just shocked by this beer opening tactic that the other one has. Guys, I know I'm a helpless woman here, but even I can do that. There is so much suburban conversation in this movie. They all get high and feel connected to everything, I guess. It's a wonderful time. Only, it can't be wonderful for so long, because the night mist rolls in, so we all know something bad's gonna happen. Oh wait, the creepy kids are gone. Who could have thought? They go back to the creepy cave that talks to children. The husband follows them there, and he witnesses them jump in. Where I'll give it to them in this moment, because he's not their dad. This is the other couple that doesn't have children, and he witnesses somebody else's children jump into a pit presumably to their death, and I think he does a really good job uh, personifying the absolute panic and horror that would run through, I think, anybody's head if they saw this happen. They even do this really good bit where it's basically like he can't even hear anything around him, he's ignoring his wife's phone calls because what is he even gonna say, just the pure adrenaline running through him, and we have a perfect reveal where the children just kind of run out of their parents' cabin in the morning and, uh, you know, he's left wondering what the fuck just happened. He clearly thinks he's going batshit insane and he makes the wonderful judgment call to tell his wife about what he saw. She also thinks that he's batshit insane, and we get our reveal that he actually has mental health issues and has been having mental health issues in the past, so, you know, that just leads that door open to be like, wow, maybe he's fucking crazy. I've seen so many horror movies like this at this point that I am ready for my spouse to come in the room and be like, hey, the kids are possessed by lizard people. And I go, mm-hmm, I hear you, babe. I hear you. Let's kill them. This movie then that has been going so incredibly slow goes zero to a hundred in like five seconds. We have the couples fighting outside because they say something negative about the children. Obviously he says that, you know, something's fucking wrong with the children. Roll credits. So they're fighting outside. One second they're fighting outside and next thing you know, the kids are actually staging for the guy that's not their dad to basically look like he killed one of them. And the little boy kind of just chokes on something, and the entire family crowds around him, obviously trying to resuscitate him. It, it, it doesn't work. He's dead. I really feel like that if you were going to try to frame somebody for your murder, you might want to do a better job, like, you know, stab yourself and hand the knife to them or something, because, like, choking on something seems kind of like, you know, an accident. But they are so quick. To assume this man murdered their child, they're ready to call the police then and there that second that he murdered their son. There's no evidence here. He apparently choked. Now this is where I'm going down the route that the children could have done a bit of a better job faking their own murder, you know. Gun in hand, knife in hand, whatever have you. They could have done a better job. 
he kind of just hangs around outside and then convinces his wife when she wanders out into the wilderness that she needs to come with him to the pit to hell because he is going to just prove that, you know, those kids are not actually uh, children and they're demons or whatever. If, you know, I was his wife in this situation, I would really be wondering why my husband, who everyone in the room seems to believe is guilty of murder and is also mentally insane, um, is asking me to come to this room that has a pit to hell, but, you know, you do you, babe, I guess. They get there. Obviously, there's no dead children at the bottom of the pit, and he looks insane, just like he's always looked insane. She calls him insane, tells him to fuck off, whatever have you. She leaves. He's obviously just devastated by this, as, you know, anybody probably would be in this situation. She gets back to the cabin, and it's pitch fucking dark outside. It's, this can't be more than a two-mile hike. These, like, six-year-old kids made this hike. I, I, I'm not buying the fact that they left and it was bright day and now it's fucking midnight. I'm just not buying it. I'm sorry. The cops also still aren't here, uh, even though they were just called to a crime scene. But, you know, that's, uh, it's American response system right there, I guess. The dead son just wakes up, so, uh, that's great. The wife's now just kind of left alone, considering she walked into the cabin and, uh, no one's there, including the dead child. She hears a bunch of chattering sounds, like, I don't know, bug sounds if I had to place them. And then gets jump-scared by the dead mom. The son is just staring at her in the bathroom with basically this football defensive lineback pose ready to go. But she's able to quickly lock him in the bathroom, you know, because apparently bathroom doors can stop all entities, including bug entities. <laughs> Why don't she just, like, turn on the light? <laughs> oh, moths like lights or some shit? So once the son's been trapped, obviously, inevitably, the daughter's going to come back, and she wants to play hide-and-seek with her. I don't really know why you'd, you'd do that. You just, you just killed the lady, guys. I don't know why you're playing with your food. Do bugs play with their food? I don't think they do. She escapes the house, and the cop finally shows up, you know, after about 15 fucking hours. And, uh, she goes in there and gets immediately murdered, as, uh, you would expect. The wife somehow manages to get in her car undetected, and Ben now chooses this very, very opportune timing to appear again. This is obviously a fucking trap. But the wife just gets out of the car anyway and decides she's just gonna walk up to him like normal. Uh, damn. Have you forgotten that your mentally insane husband who you think has murdered children has now come back after you've witnessed bug gods? Was that a great idea on your part? No, it wasn't. There's a big tussle in the house, and then she finally stabs him in the shoulder. This isn't a fatal wound, obviously. He's, uh, he's fine. You just was stabbed in the shoulder, but, uh, he sits there and just sulks on the couch like he's about to witness his last moments on this planet, and she takes this opportunity to run away only to be absolutely KO'd by these children again. When she wakes up, she's back in the cave, because these six-year-old children have dragged four grown men, apparently, across two miles into this cave to be thrown into the pit of hell. I still have no idea what these creatures are. I, I have no idea what's fucking happening. I, I don't. But she finally takes this opportunity, despite, I'm not even kidding, watching them turn their back on her for about five minutes and doing nothing about it, she finally takes this opportunity to push them into the pit. To be honest, I don't know where she thought this would go, considering those things clearly came from the pit. So, uh, is it a problem if they go back to the pit? I, I don't think so. I think that's where they want to be. But we get a ridiculously bloated chase scene as she comes back and she's ready to go. She gets in her car and she fucking leaves. Finally. She pulls over because she just decides it's a really good time to have a good old cry. Good old cry, I guess, on the side of the road. We've all been there. We've all been there. This is uh, the opportunity that the children and her husband take to uh, apparently just come back into the frame and just, uh, just T-pose at them. And she has made up her mind to run them down. Can't really blame her. That's where we end the movie. Which, uh, you know, I have questions. What are these bug entities? They don't discuss what they are at all. Like, even when they've monologued at times, they don't discuss what they are at all. Are they aliens? Are they demons? Are they entities? Are they gods? We don't know at all. 
there's some small moments where we kind of see reflections of like the children turning into bugs and then turning back into children. I'm aware that this was a budgeting workaround because they didn't have the CGI to show bug people. But if you don't have the CGI for bug people, why make a bug people movie? Or just go full camp and just make it absolutely practical effect ridiculous and I get a good laugh at it. Instead, I just don't know what the hell these things even are. And they spent so much of this goddamn movie talking about suburban conversation and how to open fucking beer, but we never get any exposition on what the hell these things even are and what's fucking happening. Because, you know, believe it or not, you make a movie about bug gods, I'm gonna be interested in the bug gods, not, uh, you know, not your failing marriages, people. But that's it for me with Something is Wrong with the Children, which, uh, still nail on the head with that one, I guess. But thank you guys so much. Videos like this, I make them, and I'd love to hear your suggestions in the future, okay? So do make sure to interact with this video, and please subscribe if you do like these videos and you want to see them in the future, okay? Thanks so much. See you soon.